crafters. This is Suzanne from A Creative Muse, and I am here with two collections working together. I used both the Better Press and then also the House Mouse collection, these cutie patooties here. Alrighty, crafters, let's get into this video. Let's get started. Okay, crafters, so I made six cards, all different kinds of ways. I was exploring alcohol markers with the images, watercoloring with the images. Like after I did the images of the House Mouse collection, which I'll show you in a second, then I brought in the better press. This is like my favorite card because after I colored the image and everything, this lined up properly, the sentiment. Yay! All right, characters, let's look into let's look into the collection House Mouse. And the illustrations, this is not the first time that they're done in stamps, but Spellbinders has decided to work with this illustrator company, etc., and they have brought us some House Mouse cling stamps so these are cling rubber stamps okay oh i don't have the names on them wouldn't that be nice if i had the names on them <laughs> see rubber stamps so you have the image on the front rubber stamp if you're using a misty you would take out everything out of it you would take out either your grip mat or the black mat that comes with the misty and stamp straight on the base of the misty surface to stamp with a cling stamp all right let me get these names really quickly i'll be right back okay crafters so in this collection which is the spring collection by house mouse designs there are six cling stamps i think all of them are like landscape images and they do fit on a four by six stamp sheet okay first we have popping by stamp there's the flowers he's just popping by you get life is always bringing unexpected gifts missing you next we have spring rain stamp isn't this cute <laughs> i love the with the rain you could do a lot with this with the background <laughs> Then there is T for two sentiment. Thankful for your friendship. I like hanging out with you. With the last one, friends make the world beautiful. Of course, I had to use that one. This is just like best friend hanging out for coffee or tea. Yeah, Daisy Mouse stamp. I love this one because it has that motion. A single flower and the mouse. So cute. Thinking of you. Spring is in the air. Special delivery. There is bouquet for you stamp. Especially for you and you are special carrying a bouquet. That's my happy birthday card right there. And lastly, there is Berry Good Stamp. So they're just hanging out in the garden, enjoying some berries. You're so sweet. We're very good together. Adorable. Now let me talk about quickly, how did the merge of Better Press come up with House Mouse? I had done the House Mouse. Like I said, watercoloring, using alcohol markers, and then I wanted to put the sentiments but then I thought, you know what would be kind of cool? Maybe a better press sentiment. And then I started with one and I used a better press sentiment on every single one and then took it a little further. So now let's get into my better press haul. I will link here my first better press video where I got the letter press system and I showed you guys what it was, showed you how to use it. Since then, I have gone back and added to my own personal better press stash. I have hauled a note from me to you. So super cute. That was inspired by Jennifer McGuire's video. <laughs> Diamond Avery. This will be coming very soon because I just love this one. And because of the shape, you can then use your essential diamonds dies to cut around it or create layers with it. This set works in conjunction with essential diamonds. Win-win. <laughs> Let's chat soon icons. So this one does have some dies cut around the icons, but it doesn't cut around the sentiment. But those are rectangular, so you can cut a strip or use one of your sentiment dies. Spellbinders has many of them, so I always go back to my sentiment dies. They're normally in, like, the Glimmer Hot Foil sets. And then lastly, Butterfly Wishes. So you get loads of butterflies, and you also get the sentiment wishing you all the best. Isn't that cute? And it comes with a coordinating die, so you can... Keep the shape of the butterflies or just use individual butterflies. And also, you cut around the sentiment. So, love. For my examples here, and I have shown you that Spellbinders had sent this to me. Let me tell you, initially, I always go for the images. Like, oh, the images. But these two sets, winner. <laughs> Fabulous. And they proved themselves when I was working with these house mouse cards. They're also currently sold out. If I find anywhere where it's in stock... 
I will link that first, but I will also put a link where you can ask to be notified at like spellbinders or scrapbook.com. A little message sentiments so love and i finally figured out how to put it in my little system like how i did here with the sentiment and then the coordinating die just for ease okay fabulous and you can see all the sentiments there from birthday to a little message to say wishing you all the best thanks for being you and then this one always and forever sentiment strips this is fantastic this is reminiscent of the hex gems sentiment set which is a glimmer hot foil set where you would get a series of sentiments and then you have the coordinating die this is also in better press with a better press plate winner love and you can just press it a bunch of different colorways cut them out and then you just have all these little strips ready to go so love so love. seeing that i am talking about better press let's talk about two cards that i finally put together both of these were painted while i was away in berlin germany i carried a little small box the good thing about the better press even traveling abroad if you get a small little box, I use a six by six box. I was able to put some of my Zig clean color markers, which are watercolor markers. I had pre-done panels and just carry panels. You don't have to make a whole card, just work on your panels. So I was able to work on this panel, work on this panel. I'll talk about this one in a second because it's funny. <laughs> the first one, this is the butterfly garden press plate and die set love took me forever and a day to do this i would have done this quicker if i had done it in alcohol marker but no i had to test myself with watercolor well at least i had time because i didn't have a whole bunch of crafting there in germany so i had time to do it like i said i would have done this quicker if i had done alcohol coloring but still love one of my by far favorites and then cut out the center here which says thank you for all you do you run that through your better press and then you cut out with the coordinating die and you can even still do the butterfly different like if i change my mind on this i can run another one better press this again see i'm so used to saying glimmer let me say press this i can press this again and then use the coordinating die to color it out and then cover this if i change my mind on it that's just so customizable and if you're coloring this and you make a mistake you can still fix it by putting something here the panel okay the panel is the panel Put it on black 110 pound cardstock because of all the black that's here this is like my by far favorite better press project is this one even though it took me a while to watercolor it i was learning watercoloring while doing it it's still my favorite card and then i topped it off with some green gems butterfly garden press plate fabulous, fabulous. this image is from the better press letter press set i have it a starter floral plate they don't sell this individually. You would get this in your better press system, okay? This is the example when we all started out with the better press. When I had painted it and I started from the top coming in with the florals, I struggled here with the flowers, so I saved it by putting a bunch of stickle there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I didn't have all my Zig clean color markers on me. So I was trying to create brown and it was really, really bad. And then when I came back, I loved everything else that I did. So I was like, you know what? Do an old trick from back in the day. I put some stickles on it. Just stickle the whole centers. And I think it worked. It actually adds something to it, doesn't it? <laughs> I had to cut it down. In hindsight, looking at it, I'm so happy that I did. So I painted like this all the way down and right here, because that stem is so thin, here I did good. But right after here, down here, I was watercoloring, then made a mistake, added more water, and it just bled all the way out. It was horrific. And then I did not want to throw this away because this looks great to me. So I was like, you know what? Let me bring in a die. So I used the Essentials 4 Petal Label die set to then crop around the image and create that focal point, which I think works so well. Here, that comes into Always and Forever Sentiment Strips. Happy birthday. Done. Put that right there in the back here that's spellbinders fern cardstock and i think it matches these zig clean color markers and the set i'm using is this one 30 color set a but you can buy individual markers it doesn't have a low price point okay just 
letting you know, but I got a great deal on Amazon and I keep them in a container like this. So I look at the bottoms to get the colors, okay? But these are more muted colors. Their other colors are like super bright, but this color set A with 30 colors are more muted and really pretty as shown here on the box. You see how you can see it right there? Pretty close. The most actual watercoloring, I would say this little section there. I was so happy with that little section of watercolor. Everything else, I think I'm still learning my way through, but that looks like real watercolor to me. <laughs> From the last video, I showed you guys one of my new favorites. I have so many favorite embossing folders from Spellbinders, but this one, she's just like, I am here to stay, Suzanne. I am going to be in the front of your Spellbinders embossing folder stash. This is a 3D embossing folder five and a half inch wide, eight and a half inch tall. If you run the full size and you cut it in half on the eight and a half inch side at four and a quarter, you get two A2 panels. So now all of a sudden, this thing is making me make A2 cards. Normally I would do like five by seven, but I still keep using it A2. So funny. This is the Mandala Blooms embossing folder. Love, love love this embossing folder and I think it works so well with the florals and the background underneath here just to tie it in back with the black I brought in this is the seal twine die fabulous set if you have any issues tying real twine get this die to use with your cards because it just works so well when you run like specialty cardstock or regular cardstock and you bend it around because this is underneath in the back I'm not getting cracking. This is 110 pound black cardstock and it's not cracking. And then I finished it off with some black gems. These are Onyx gems at Spellbinders. I got a pack of black. Isn't that pretty? I just love it so much. I was so happy that I was able to save it. Happy, happy from Germany. <laughs> but everything else though was done when I got back. Let's start off with like my first two examples here of House Mouse. This one. I stamped with black pigment ink, use clear detail embossing powder. I did watercoloring. This one, I took out my Olo markers and colored it with my Olo markers. You can see the difference when it is painted watercolor and then here when it's done a different way. This watercolor, I decided I wanted to torture myself. I did different techniques of watercolor too. Zig clean color markers like I just showed you, which I did when I was away. This is by Prima Marketing. This is called Tropicals. These colors you're seeing here. The mouse, that with his feet. I think I watered this down to get that colorway. One of these I watered to get it really light, but this is all that. Learning along the way, but this one, it tested me. I was like, okay, so I'll come back to it. And then, after I had done the watercolor, I had this whole big piece of watercolor cardstock, but I wanted it more focused because he's just so cute carrying the flowers. That's when I came into layering Everlasting Squares dies. This set is just such a nice foundation to your stash. And it also goes along with the Everlasting Circles. So I could have done circles too, but I decided to make a square card. This card measures four and a quarter inch. It's a top folding note card, okay? In here, look at that sentiment. Tell me if you're loving how House Mouse is playing so well with the better press. <laughs> a little message sentiments, love. Then I finished the whole thing off with green gems. So super cute. Because this is a layering set, I cut out the image first, but I had lost this little edge and it was bothering me. So I went one level up and then layered it. See how it carries? This is popped off of the base. Extending the image. That one is bouquet for you. So super cute, love. Next up, T for two stamp. Isn't this cute? Another A2 card. I had the image done, but I had too much white space. At this point, I was like, again, I'm gonna go back to the better press. So I use a better press. Here's to another year. From this same set again, a little message sentiments. And behind it though, I wanted something. And you'd be so surprised to see that I used Spellbinders Club Blooms, which I was surprised myself. I have a whole bag of cut pieces in my stash. Normally I wouldn't have used this because the scaling, see how big this is? It's almost the size of it. But I had in there this piece and this piece right here. And it worked so well. I would have thought I would have used Bee Bowl Blooms. It's Club Blooms, currently sold out. 
has to be notified. You can only purchase this at Spellbinders, okay? Because it's from their large die of the month back in January. Just a out the gate, by far winning set. Love, love, love. If you want to get into florals, color this up with some Olo markers. Finished it off with some honeybee stamps green gems because of the colorway. But aren't they so cute together? This is more subtle stamping with ink as opposed to heat emboss where it becomes more dramatic this is daisy mouse stamp colored with my olo markers brought in two sentiments here from both of these sets so you can mix and match them isn't that nice a little message to say from a little message sentiments and then you brighten my day from always and forever sentiments love 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 and finished it off with some go mix gems Ooh. How's my image essential modern ovals dies and i layered up two and i purposely did broad on the top skinny on the bottom and then brought a second one in i used some green cardstock here with the brown and then layered cream here this cream is to come back to this colorway okay and then craft cardstock this is a top folding a2 card I am doing a lot of A2 cards lately. Guys, I'm normally the big 5 by 7 I don't know what's happening to me. Lastly, I have this card. Now, this is oversized. But I started off with 5 by 7 cotton card panel. I was tempted to use the double weight because I have the double weight both in A2 and A7. A7 is 5 by 7 And the double weight cardstock only comes in porcelain. Double weight has a much higher price point and I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out. If it wasn't something I could save, I'd rather go the lower end. <laughs> I think was using the clean color markers, but with a brush. And I really should have gone in with the blender. But, you know, I learn. Always learning in crafting. And with the better press, that's another thing to learn. But boy, such an easy learning curve with <laughs> this one. So I used the popping by stamp colored this up in these pinks the green and then my little mouse i was trying to go with gray and then i came in with the better press plate now i had this whole image done first before i went in with the press plate thank goodness on the magnetic chase there is a grid i was flying blind <laughs> like the mouse flying with aligning this thing ran it through and I was praying like, this might not work after you did all that coloring. And I was shocked out my mind that I saw that it worked well. <laughs> I was giggling, just like I was just giggling a while ago, that it worked out well. So use the grid to align things. And I purposely put it over to this side because the mouse is here. Most examples I see combining better press plate sentiment directly here without using any dies or cutting it out, the sentiment, is done after the image. In this instance, I can see exactly why. Here is my image done, then I lined up everything. But you notice here with the H and the A, it's covering this whole hot pink watercolor fully with that black ink. So I just wanted you to know that if you stamp it afterwards, it can cover anything. So I was very lucky that I didn't go too high into this guy. I didn't want it to cut into him too much, but I'm glad that it cut down here because I have so much florals going on. So that may be something you want to consider when working with your better press plates, especially with a nice sizable image like this. Look how it just melds seamlessly into this. Love, love, love. You can feel the goodness too. I'm going to say, because I don't have the name written here, that this is the You Make Me Happy Better Press Plate. It is fabulous. Clearly. I've seen examples of it done, and then they would bring in flowers, for example. Fabulous with flowers. Are you guys hating it with their watercolor image? Even with the mouse? I'm not hating it at all. I think it's gorgeous. And then to finish the whole thing off, because of so much white space, I came in with Spellbinder's new Dimensional Dots. Tell you, love these dimensional dots. I introduced it in my last video because their largest dot is not a gigantic dot. It's a decent sized dot. And then the set is just really good sizing. To go even smaller, I came in with Spellbinders Black Gems. So it's a combination of enamel dot and gems. It looks really nice together. So if you do get this set, just ink it up really good. And I had the biggest mistake cleaning my magnetic chase with the archival ink. Spilled all over me. I am pressing. This whole thing popped out. Half a bottle emptied on me. 
just be careful when you're pouncing on it maybe i was pouncing too hard every time i use this i have to clean my magnetic chase and clean my plates i want my plates to be like pristine that's just my thing it's easier for me to see it clean so i was pouncing away and then the whole thing splashed out on me and i did the <gasps> that type of whole thing yeah and then the swear jar got a couple dollars in it it didn't get some coins it got dollars <laughs> Alrighty, crafters. So I just wanted to show you. It wasn't planned, but obviously, if you do have the House Mouse collection and you've been enjoying it, consider bringing the Better Press in it because wow, or any other images you have, even if you have floral stamps, stamp them on the card panel, then bring in that Better Press plate. I'm not sure if I could do the sentiment first, then stamp on and then do watercolor. I have not seen examples of it done that way. Most examples I see is image first, done, then sentiment on top because my sentiment is pressing and covering. You just don't know. Happy, happy, happy. I was like, yay <laughs> love my better press all right crafters everything will be detailed and linked below for both house mouse collection and more of my better press goodies you may want to add something to your stash that you never thought about before or let's say you focused only on images but you didn't use the sentiments well i am here to show you that the sentiments are worth definitely taking a second look at most of them were done in black this one is in bark the black archival ink for the better press and the bark are both in that regal ink set so i will put a link for the regal set okay Alrighty, crafters until the next video stay crafty my friends i was having a ball bye